Soros and a partner funded the new $5 million liberal group, MoveOn.org. Well, MoveOn.org, what, what exactly is that? Well, you remember it. This is the group that uh, originally called General Petraeus, General Betraeus. It was despicable. Well, who had they tapped for the executive director of MoveOn.org? This guy, Zach Exley. I've never heard of him before. Do you know who he is? Well, he previously had trained activists for the anarchist group, the Ruckus Society. These are the riots in Seattle. Helped orchestrate by this guy. More on that in just a minute. Oh, by the way, he's also a blogger for the Huffington Post, which is interesting because the Huffington Post gets money from George Soros. Oh, and he's also a fellow with the George Soros Open Society Institute. Violent radicals. Oh, and by the way, it's just not that phrase that came. George Soros has been following him as he originally funded the Ella Baker Society or uh, the Center for Human Rights. And then, of course, he was on the Apollo Alliance. And then when he got fired from the White House, he went to Center for American Progress, which is also funded by George Soros. Radicals. Radicals. Oh, the Open Society Institute, in case you don't know what this is, don't worry, you will in the next couple of days. The Open Society Institute is George Soros' most important group. It is really spectacular. It is his philanthropist arm. This is where he really, he looks for Mother Teresa to give out his precious money. And boy, did he find Mother Teresa. Well, not exactly. He found, to head this organization, the founder of the violent activist group SDS, Students for a Democratic Society. You don't know what they did in the 60s? You will. One string, $425 million every single year. The strings that are being pulled by the puppet master. Well, he wanted to have uh, campaign finance reform. He thought it was important. He spoke at Columbia University about it. Well, Open Society, his, his little group, Open Society, started by the guy with SDS, it was one of only a handful of groups who spent $123 million to push finance reform. Soros, quote, said, do something about the distortion of our electoral pro pro uh, process by the excessive use of TV advertising. So he wanted to make sure that lies couldn't distort things. Well, it wasn't long after that speech at Columbia University that, lo and behold, Senator Russ Feingold, a progressive, and a few months later, uh, with um, uh, John McCain, a Republican progressive, had came with a proposal in hand for what would eventually become the McCain-Feingold Act. The irony, if it is, is that McCain-Feingold ultimately led to the explosion of 501c3 groups, which can advertise at will. 501c3 groups. Hmm. Oh, 501c3 groups? You mean like... Sojourners, or Color for Change, or the Tides Foundation, or Media Matters, or People for the American Way, or MoveOn.org, Center for American Progress, the, Alio, uh, the Apollo Alliance, Ellersaker for Human Rights. You mean those things? You see, we had the McCain-Feingold Act, and then mysteriously, almost unbeknownst to everyone, those groups became very powerful, much more powerful. And guess who controls most of the most powerful? George Soros. George Soros, in the aftermath of 9-11, talked about police action as an alternative to war. Now, did anybody pick up on that? This is what he said. War is a false and misleading metaphor in the context of combating terrorism. Crimes require police work, not military action. George Soros. Here he is, the Democratic candidate for president, Adopting crimes require police work, not military action positions. What we've learned is that the war on terror is much more of an intelligence operation and a law enforcement operation. The war on terror is far less of a military operation and far more of an intelligence gathering law enforcement operation. And that's what we have now in our office starts with George Soros. Days after President Obama was elected, George Soros again set the agenda. 
He said, quote, I think we need a large stimulus package which will provide funds for state and local government to maintain their budgets because they are not allowed by the Constitution to run a deficit. For such a program to be successful, the federal government would need to provide hundreds of billions of dollars. In addition, another infrastructure program is necessary. In total, the cost would be between 300 and 600 billion dollar range. Well, what was on Obama's, the first thing on his agenda? The $787 billion stimulus bill. Gee, I remember this, and I remember saying at the time, who wrote this? It was too complex. It was too early in his, oh yeah, that's right, the Apollo Alliance. Where does the Apollo Alliance come from? The Tides Foundation. And where does the Tides Foundation get a lot of their funding? George Soros. Soros also heavily promotes green jobs and cap and trade. Also, days after Obama was elected, he called for a new energy bill. I think this is a great opportunity to financially deal with global warming and energy independence. The U.S. needs a cap and trade system with the auctioning of license for emissions rights. I would use the revenues from these auctions to launch a new environmentally friendly energy policy that would be yet another federal program that could help us overcome the current stagnation. Well, Congress introduced, but you stood up. You said, I don't think so. Mm -mm. The audience started to revolt. Cap and trade failed. Now, through Freedom of Information Act, we find out that the Department of Energy and the EPA actually coordinated their response to damning reports on green jobs from Spain with the help of George Soros and his Center for American Progress, which gets their funding from here. George Soros. Here it is, December 9, 2004. Um, also, there was um, uh, this piece of information. Um, this guy, where is uh, Eli? Eli um, a Pariser, there he is. He headed the Soros group, the front group, MoveOn.PAC. Now, he wasn't upset that Kerry lost. Why? He explained this in an email. This is important that you understand. Quote, in the last year, grassroots contributors, like us, gave more than $300 million to the Kerry campaign and the DNC and proved that the party doesn't need corporate cash to be competitive. It's now our party. We bought it, we own it, and we're going to take it back. Do you understand what just happened? George Soros got rid of all of the corporate money through McCain-Feingold which then allowed all the 501c3s to come in, this one might help, and this one might help, and this one might help. And all the 501c3s now make the party lift their hands. The money is the string. They control everything. They tell the party what to do. You've been watching a show. You think the Democrats are still Democrats? They're not. They're not. I want you to understand there are two kinds of puppets here. The first puppet is the puppet organizations. You know, I don't know. This is the Musicians Union, and maybe this is SCIU and the AFL CIO and ACORN. Their job on stage is to create an illusion of a big dramatic movement that is happening. A grassroots. You know how Nancy Pelosi is always saying, Oh, that's a grassroots, and that's AstroTurf, right? They're they're doing something on the stage and they're getting you to believe something. But it's all part of the show. The second kind of puppet is an individual puppet. It could be John Kerry. Uh, it could be Van Jones. It could be Andy Stern, Richard Trumpka, perhaps President Obama. Have you ever wondered who's at the other end of a Blackberry? No president has ever had that. That was a security risk. Why did we spend so much money? Who does he need to talk to? Who does he need to see texts from? Who's writing the damn speeches and the teleprompter everywhere? There are also two storylines. If you, if you would come to a show, there's always two storylines, and you'll see it in, in different movies about stages and stage performers. Even Moulin Rouge is just a favorite uh, movie of my family. Two stories. There is what's happening on stage, and then there's the one 
behind the stage. You don't ever see what's happening behind. But the story that they're telling on stage and they're acting out, you know. Oh, the government needs to spend more money to stimulate the economy. No, no, we need more government intervention. Those evil rich people won't spend their money. We need more taxes, all of that. You know this storyline. But how much of it is real? How much of it is orchestrated? Well, there's only one way to find out that answer. And that is you have to look behind the curtain. On this program over the years, we have shown you the people who are taking our country apart piece by piece. And we've shown it to you in their own words. Well, we didn't expect to find many of the things um, that they've said because many times they've said these things and they thought they were behind the curtain. They didn't expect you to see these words, words from even the President of the United States. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. A single-payer health care plan, universal health care plan. That's what I'd like to see. He's at AFL-CIO. That wasn't part of the storyline. It wasn't supposed to be revealed. That was behind the curtain. He was talking to the AFL-CIO. Behind the scenes. Soros today, and also amazing stories about violence from MSNBC. We have a commentator last night saying that um, we wonder if there should be a revolution. Of course, he's uh, saying now, of course, the answer is yes, and maybe even a violent revolution. It's an amazing, it's amazing what you are missing um, when you don't know what you're looking for. This isn't a conspiracy. That was on MSNBC. It's all out in the open. I believe you take a man at his word. And George Soros has publicly dedicated his life to this. He has even said he's willing to die for what he believes in. Here he is. In the things that I am engaged in, I'm actually willing to put my life at, at, at risk. And I think it's, it makes me feel uh, much more... Uh, uh, complete. Well, you complete me, George. Um, I'm willing to put my life at stake, and so are many people in America. It's what you believe in. But what is it that he believes in? He has tens of billions of dollars all flowing in, pulling strings. His tentacles are everywhere. What is he going through all of this trouble for to achieve? Well, globalization. George Soros believes, quote, the main obstacle of a stable and just world order is the United States. Let that sink in for a minute it's of shows. There's a lot of meat here that I need you to do your own homework on and learn the truth yourself. But we want to find out a little bit more about him and who he is and where did he come from. His childhood is shocking, traumatic. He grew up in Nazi Europe, 14 years old. He had to help the government confiscate the lands of his fellow, fellow Jewish friends and neighbors. He didn't grow up in a, a very Jewish household. His mother was a, a strong anti-Semite, George Soros's words, not mine. But when he had to go over and take the lands from the people, his Jewish friends and neighbors, who were being sent to the gas chambers, I can't imagine what that would do to a teenager, anybody, an adult. Well, what did it do to George Soros? In an interview with Steve Croft, Soros was asked if he felt guilt at all about taking the property from the Jews as a teenager. He responded, no. He also said, quote, I don't deny the Jews their national uh, uh, existence, but I don't want to be a part of it. Time really led to one man, George Soros, one guy. There's a crisis collapsing our economy. George Soros. When the administration and the progressives look for a savior to step in and save the day, George Soros. He makes predictions and his loyal followers make sure they come true. He's pulled no punches about the end game. It's one world government. The end of America's status as the prevailing world power. But why? Well, if you want to understand the why, there, you have to ask questions, and there's a few things that you need to know about George Soros. And here they are. People generally uh, uh, play with, this, with a certain set of rules. I, I am particularly interested in changes in the rules of the game. Eighty years ago, 
George Soros was born. Little did the world know then, economies would collapse. Currencies would become worthless. Elections would be stolen. Regimes would fall. And one billionaire would find himself coincidentally at the center of it all. He was born in Budapest, Hungary on August 12, 1930, as George Schwartz, the son of Orthodox Jews. Today, Soros is an atheist who doesn't embrace his Jewish identity and rarely supports Jewish causes or Israel. I've not been very engaged in Israel. Why not? I think there are enough Jews who, 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 to, to take care of Israel. In 1947, the Soros family relocated from Hungary to England, where George attended the Fabian Socialist London School of Economics. He moved to New York in 1956, became a U.S. citizen in 61, and at the age of 39, he started what would become the Quantum Fund, which he would use to attack currencies all across the globe. He later would be blamed for the financial collapses in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. And who could forget that he was the man who broke the Bank of England in 1992, shorting the British sterling by betting heavily that the currency would collapse despite government assurances to the contrary. Today has been an extremely difficult and turbulent day. Massive speculative flows continue to disrupt the functioning of the exchange rate mechanism. The money that I made on this particular transaction, the estimate is about a billion dollars. Along with currencies, Soros also collapses regimes. With his Open Society Fund, which was founded in 1979, Soros has helped fund the Velvet Revolution in the Czech Republic, the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine, the Rose Revolution in Georgia. He also helped engineer coups in Slovakia, Croatia, and Yugoslavia. So what is his target now? Us. America. He said it himself on many occasions. He said, what I have done in other countries in terms of overturning uh, bad governments, I'm going to do in this country. Our country needs us. And we need people like George Soros, who is fearless and willing to step up when it counts. Political analysts say the shadow party he has built here greatly resembles those he created in other countries before instigating a coup. He created his own party within a party, or his shadow party, outside of the Democratic Party, the Center for American Progress. That was one of the original shadow party groups. This group, from the beginning, was charged with getting control of the conservative media. Many of the people in the Obama administration were just drawn right up from there. He spent millions in 2004 to drive President Bush out of office. He didn't succeed. But changing the attitude and policies of America, he says, remains his top priority. In one of his books, Soros writes, quote, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States, end quote. You wouldn't want a man like this anywhere near the President of the United States, would you? Soros has been granted at least four visits so far to the Obama White House. This, a man who has repeatedly called for the devaluation of the dollar. A slow uh, um, decline in the value of the dollar, a, a managed uh, decline. He's waged a war against capitalism. Capitalism is not directly opposed to open society. Nevertheless, it poses some serious threats. This is a man who wants the world to be one global society without borders or individual governments. One global society and one global gatekeeper. <laughs>